readers of the Civil War. Who was David Sloan Stanley? Major General David S. Stanley was a prominent Union officer and a Congressional Medal of Honor recipient who served as commander of the 4th Army Corps in the Western Theater of the American Civil War. During the Franklin-Nashville campaign, David S. Stanley was shot in the neck while leading his troops to victory at the Battle of Nashville. David Sloan Stanley was born on June 1, 1828 in Cedar Valley, an unincorporated area of southwestern Wayne County, Ohio. He was the second of five children born to John Bratton and Sarah Stanley. Stanley spent his early years helping on the family farm. Stanley entered West Point on July 1, 1848. Among his classmates, who later became general officers in the Union Army, were Henry W. Slocum, Alexander D. McCook, Augustus V. Krauts, and George Crook. Stanley proved to be a talented student, graduating ninth in his class of 43 cadets on July 1, 1852. Following his graduation, Army officials breveted Stanley as a second lieutenant and assigned him to the 2nd U.S. Dragoons. After nine months of training at the Cavalry School for Practice in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, Stanley served on a surveying party charting the route for the Pacific Railroad from Arkansas to California. On March 3, 1855, officials transferred him to the 1st U.S. Cavalry, and less than one month later, on March 27, they promoted him to 1st Lieutenant. In 1856, the Army transferred Stanley and his regiment to Bleeding Kansas to help stifle the violent strife between free soilers and the pro-slavery advocates. When the American Civil War erupted, Stanley marched his command from Arkansas to Missouri, which was on the brink of secession. Serving under Major General John C. Fremont, Stanley engaged in federal struggles to drive Confederate partisans, led by Sterling Price and Ben McCullough, from the state. Early rebel victories at the Battle of Wilson's Creek and the Battle of Lexington forced Fremont to reorganize his forces. The restructuring benefited Stanley when the War Department commissioned him as a Brigadier General in the Volunteer Army on September 28th. 1861. On November 9, 1861, after some reorganization, the War Department issued General Orders No. 97 and assigned Major General Henry W. Halleck to command the newly created Department of the Missouri. It was about this time that Stanley broke his ankle while mounting an uncooperative horse, causing him to serve in a non-combat role until July 1862. When Stanley returned to active duty, officials placed him in command of the 1st Division of Major General John Pope's Army of the Mississippi. Stanley's small division was made up of four Ohio regiments, the 27th, 39th, 43rd, and 63rd Ohio Volunteer Infantries. Under Pope's command, Stanley's division took part in the Union operations at New Madrid and Island No. 10, which helped secure the federal control of the Mississippi River down to Fort Pillow in Tennessee. Afterwards, Stanley took part in Halleck's siege of Corinth, Mississippi, and in pursuit of Confederate General P.G.T. Beauregard's retreating rebel army. In June of 1862, President Lincoln appointed Pope to command the newly created Army of Virginia. On June 26, Brigadier General William S. Rosecrans succeeded Pope as commander of the Army of Mississippi. Under Rosecrans's leadership, Stanley commanded the 2nd Division of the Army of the Mississippi at the Union victory at the Battle of Iuka. Afterward, Stanley's division returned to the Army of the Mississippi, to Corinth, where they successfully defended the town from a Confederate attack at the Second Battle of Corinth. Three weeks after the Second Battle of Corinth, the War Department recreated the Department of the Cumberland, with Rosecrans commanding. On November 24, 1862, Rosecrans appointed Stanley as Chief of Cavalry of the Army of the Cumberland. 
One month later, Stanley's cavalry took part in the Union victory at the Battle of Stones River. His gallant and meritorious service during that engagement earned him a brevet promotion to the rank of lieutenant colonel in the regular army. Impressed with Stanley's performance at Stones River in February of 1863, Rosecrans recommended promoting his cavalry commander to Major General of Volunteers. Rosecrans' endorsement proved effective. At the outset of the Tullahoma campaign, Army officials listed Stanley as a Major General commanding the Cavalry Corps. Stanley's cavalry served as Rosecrans' eyes and ears as the Army of the Cumberland advanced through Tennessee, but in late summer, Stanley fell ill and missed the Battle of Chickamauga. When Stanley returned to action in November of 1863, officials placed him in command of the 1st Division of the 4th Corps and sent him north to help relieve Major General Ambrose E. Burnside's troops, who were under siege at Knoxville, Tennessee. On December 3, 1863, officials promoted him to the rank of Major in the regular Army. Stanley's division remained in eastern Tennessee for a few months after Confederate General James Longstreet lifted the siege of Knoxville in December. During the next few months, Stanley's division took part in operations around Dalton, Georgia, the Battle of Resica, the Battle of Dallas, the Battle of Pickett's Mill, the Battle of Kenneshaw Mountain, and the Battle of Peachtree Creek. Stanley received a brevet promotion to the rank of colonel in the regular army for his gallant and meritorious service at the Battle of Resica, Georgia. On July 30, 1864, Stanley was appointed to command the 4th Army Corps, following Major General Oliver Howard's promotion to command of the Army of the Tennessee. Stanley led the 4th Corps throughout the rest of the Atlanta campaign, including the Battle of Jonesboro, where he was wounded. After the fall and occupation of Atlanta, Sherman embarked on his march to the sea. While he was busy making Georgia howl, Sherman turned the pursuit of Confederate General John Bell Hood's Army of Tennessee over to Major General George H. Thomas, commander of the Army of the Cumberland. Hood had grand dreams of defeating each Union force before they reunited, wrestling Nashville from Union control and possibly invading Ohio. Schofield's army, including Stanley's Fourth Corps, dashed Hood's dreams when they slipped past the Army of Tennessee at Spring Hill, Tennessee, during the night of November 29, 1864. On the following day, Hood ordered an all-out assault against Schofield outside of Franklin, Tennessee. During the fighting at the Battle of Franklin near the center of the Union line late in the afternoon, an enemy soldier shot Stanley through the neck putting him out of action until January of 1865. By the time Stanley returned to his command on January 31, 1865, Thomas and Schofield had decimated Hood's army at the Battle of Nashville, sending the defeated rebels scurrying out of Tennessee and into northern Alabama. After pursuing Hood's retreating army, Stanley's Corps returned to East Tennessee in the spring of 1865 to prevent Robert E. Lee's army from escaping to the west. On March 13, 1865, Stanley received a brevet promotion to Brigadier General in the regular army for gallant and meritorious conduct during the Battle of Rough Station, Georgia, on July 4, 1864, and a brevet promotion to Major General in the regular army during the Battle of Franklin on November 30, 1864. In June of 1865, the Army sent Stanley and his corps to New Orleans, Louisiana on their way to Texas, where they spent the rest of the year. Stanley mustered out of the volunteer service on February 1, 1866, but he continued his military career as colonel of the 22nd Infantry in the United States Army. For the next 26 years, he served in numerous posts, mostly in the American West. Of particular note was an expedition that he led to explore parts of Montana along the Yellowstone River in 1873. Stanley served as commander of the Department of New Mexico from November 3, 1883 to May 1, 1884. 
While there, the army promoted him to the rank of Brigadier General on March 24, 1884. On May 8, 1884, officials appointed Stanley as the commander of the Department of Texas. Eight years later, on June 1, 1892, Stanley retired from active service. On March 29, 1893, the United States Congress honored Stanley's performance at the Battle of Franklin by awarding him the Congressional Medal of Honor. His citation noted that Stanley, at a critical moment, rode to the front of one of his brigades, reestablished its lines, and gallantly led it in a successful assault. Stanley died of kidney failure on March 13, 1902, at the age of 73, at his residence in Washington, D.C. His remains were interred at the United States Soldiers and Airmen's Home National Cemetery in the nation's capital. It's your history. Learn it, know it, and love it.